Hey, what's happening, everybody? Jeremy from Whistlekick with an out of sequence bonus episode for martial arts school owners during the time of COVID 19, coronavirus, pandemic, shelter at home, whatever you want to call the situation that we're facing. I'm here with some thoughts. Why am I here with thoughts? Because I've been spending a lot of time emailing and messaging and on the phone with a lot of school owners, some of whom are our clients, some of whom are just reaching out for support or to bounce things off me. And I thought, instead of doing that individually, let's put together these thoughts and maybe even reach more people. Because if you don't know what we do at Whistlekick, it's all in support of the traditional martial arts. And without schools, it's pretty hard to have the traditional martial arts carry on. So I've got a list. There are a bunch of things that I've put together here. And I think it all has to come under the heading of survival, right? This is unlikely to be a time that martial arts schools are going to thrive or grow. I think there's some opportunity on the far side, and you'll see what I mean as we go through this. But with martial arts schools closed, with people fearful financially, how do we handle this so we don't lose our schools? How do we handle it so people don't go broke and lay off people? How do we address this? And there's one, not easy, but simple way to look at it. And it's about massive action, not improved action, not significant action, massive action. The default right now for most martial arts schools seems to be teaching a few online classes. And then you realize that's not enough. If this thing goes more than another week or two, you're going to see people start to make decisions about how they spend their money. And let me tell you, I've had a school. Anybody out there as a school owner knows, people don't do homework very well, do they? So if the only value you're providing to them is a pre-recorded class that they can go and check out and watch and, and follow along, not very many of them are going to do this. Maybe half of them will, if we're lucky. That leaves the other half questioning the value of paying for these classes. People are scared. People are reactive. We have to, as an industry, provide confidence, be leaders, and show people that we are not scared. How do we do that? By delivering massive action for providing tremendous value. Why is value important? Because value is how people decide how to spend their time and their money. If somebody has a choice, they've got $20 in their hand and they can buy A or B. They can buy a chicken sandwich or a hamburger. The one that is the best value to them. Value is money and how they think about it, what it tastes like, etc. right? You know, this is value. This is how everyone decides how to do everything. If the value of holding on to that money is greater than spending that money with your school, they're not going to do it. You can't do less right now. You can't even do the same amount. You have to do more. People are terrified. Not all of them are terrified. People are at least anxious. Some are scared. Some are terrified. And this is where delivering as much as you possibly can to give them some reassurance, some options, becomes absolutely critical. You have to over-deliver. You have to make that student paying that bill a no-brainer. They have to look at that invoice come in or it's the first of the month or however you do your billing. They have to look at everything that they received over the last month and say, wow, this is, I, I'm going to give up some of our food before I give this up. That's the attitude that you should have. Is it going to be exhausting? Absolutely. The things I'm going to tell you to do here are going to be challenging, but I want you to consider it's now like 930 at night and I'm recording this episode because that's how important this is to me. I want to see every one of your schools survive and thrive and on the other side of this grow. If you fail to do this, if you fail, not, I, I'm not saying that my strategy is the only way, but if you fail to provide this value to your student, 
if you fail to deliver enough value, I'm going to keep using that word, if you don't deliver enough value to them, you may lose students, you may go into debt, you may have to close your school. None of those are good. I don't want to see any of that happen. So let's talk about over-delivering. What does that mean? That means that if you teach two days a week under normal circumstances, you should have four or five online classes going. If you normally teach a kid's class and an adult class Tuesdays and Thursdays, there better be three, four, five, ten kids' classes, ten adult classes that week. Maybe they're not all an hour. Maybe they're shorter periods of time. Maybe you pre-record these classes and some of them are general, some of them are focused on specific topics. Maybe you do a class on blocking, a class on sparring movement, a class on open hand techniques, a class on a certain form. The more specific you are and the more general you are, the more it gives people options. People like choices. Live classes. These are more challenging. You have to be more engaging to keep people's attention. But I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, are up, excuse me, up to that challenge. Oh, there we go. Excuse me. If you can hold the attention of a group class for an hour, you can hold the attention of an online class. Constant communication, a lot of verbal stuff, right? Cheering them on, letting them know what's going on. Maybe you limit the size of the classes so you can give more individualized attention. There's no wrong way to do it as long as you're doing it, as long as you're trying it, and you're iterating on what works. This worked, that didn't, let's do less of that, more of the what worked, and we keep going. Here's the number one thing that I'm recommending to schools right now. Private online lessons. If you can find time, 15 or 20 minutes even, to work with every student on your roster, they will stay. Once a week, you connect with them. You let them know you're here, you're supportive, their well-being is important to you, and you're going to work with them on stuff that they're having a hard time with, and maybe give them some homework. That's going to go a long way. I've seen a lot of different numbers. A lot of people handle things really differently. Most of you, if you have larger schools, you have assistant instructors. There's a good chance they're on the payroll. They should be doing some of these private instructions too. I'm not expecting them all to come from the owner necessarily, but unless you don't let anybody else teach or help you out, you should be able to handle this. And if you do, if you teach all of them, let's say you have 200 students. Let's say all of them are interested. And let's say you do a 15-minute private lesson. You schedule 20 minutes, so you've got a buffer. That's 60 hours over the course of the week. It's a lot of time. But what if it's over six days? Now it's 10 hours a, 10 hours a day. You can make that work. It's a long day, absolutely. But is this important enough to you? I think it's important to start incorporating options for the family. I think during this difficult time, it's not just for that student, it's for the whole family. Because we're all in this together and that family is going through this together. It's an experience that nobody would choose, but let's make it as positive as possible. Story time. Most martial arts instructors are amazing storytellers. And if you're familiar with what we do at Whistlekick and with our podcast, Martial Arts Radio, you know that we've got Two, almost 250 interview episodes over the last five years to showcase what wonderful storytellers martial artists are. Read a book. There are so many ways that you can engage with the younger audience or the family together. You can also have fitness classes. Not all of you are going to feel comfortable doing that. That's okay. But if you can find somebody maybe within your, your school who would be comfortable teaching you know, some kind of basic fitness class, some kind of calisthenics, cardio kickboxing, whatever you call it, it's a great option. And make sure you're inviting everyone in the family to participate. 
Why? Because it's added value, which supports that massive action that we're talking about. But secondly, it's getting them doing things together. And for those of you that offer family style classes, you know how important that engagement is among the family and they may be missing that right now. You've also got a lot of offline activities that you can give people. You can give them homework. It can be general, it can be specific, it could be by rank, by age group, lots of ways you can slice that. Scavenger hunts, probably won't have anything to do with martial arts, but what if you and or your staff are turning out extracurriculars for people stuck at home? A lot of parents are struggling right now to get work done because their kids are home. Businesses are closed, parents are trying to do their work, They've got kids that they're trying to educate, and when they're not educating them, the kids are, they're, they're unsettled. This is not a normal way of life. So the more value you can provide there, there's that word again, value, massive action. Give them a scavenger hunt. Give them a crossword puzzle. We, uh, at masterhopkick.com, we've got a coloring and activity book that you can download for free. Download that and ship it off to them. Something like 80 pages. That'll keep them busy. You can provide reading assignments. There is a, well, we can't call it an infinite amount, but far more written online about martial arts than you could ever read in a lifetime. Find a few articles, read through them, make sure they work for you, share them with your students, and ask them to respond to some prompts. Remember what those were like in, in school? What did you think about this article? How did it make you feel? How does this relate to you and your martial arts training? I bet if you found the articles, read through them, came up with a handful of prompts, it took you 30 minutes. Newsletters. You need to stay engaged with your students. It should be constant. If you don't have a newsletter list, it's free and easy to set one up that with something like MailChimp. That's the one that we recommend to our clients. Um, social media, you've got the phone, there are a lot of different ways. Constant contact with your students and their families. And it goes along with newsletters, but blog posts. You should be turning out content so constantly and at such volume that people are shocked at how much you're doing and they're wondering how you're getting it all done. Probably means you're not going to sleep much. And how much you do is a direct reflection of how important this is to you. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. Right now, I'm choosing to not watch television, not go to bed, not do personal things. I'm choosing to record this video. And when I'm done, guess what? I have to go edit it and upload it and turn it into an audio episode and do a bunch of other things. I'm going to bed late tonight because this is important to me. And if your school and your students are important to you, you need to show them. They have to have zero doubt in mind of what you, they mean to you. Now, if people want more, if you want to talk some of this stuff out, you're welcome. I'm going to give you all the ways you can contact me. Okay, So you can email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. That is my personal email address. You can find us on social media. We're at Whistlekick. That may or may not get, it'll get to me eventually, but it may not get to me directly the first time. Email's the best. If you want to call me, I'm not going to give you my phone number, but if you want to talk on the phone, we can set that up. Now, we're available for paid consultation, but I vowed, and I think this has already gone out, I will give anybody who wants it 10 minutes of my time. If you want to bounce something off me, over the phone, I'll do that. We will make time. I will stay up. I'll, I'll cut back to, sorry, there's a very large moth in my house. I will cut back to three or four hours of sleep per day if I have to, to serve this community because that is important to me. That is how I give back. That's how I try do my best to serve. So email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. We'll get it set up. If you need more than 10 minutes, I'm available. I will support you and your students and your school 
in whatever way I can. If somebody happened to share this with you, if you're not sure what we're doing or where we're at, go to whistlekick.com. You can see everything that we do as a company there. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. And the way we send off every episode. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.